since we talked about me in my past, you can see I was always somebody that didn't care about the peer pressure or like that was never a driving force. I was cool being alone. Being on set was fun, but it didn't feel like as an AD anyways, it didn't feel like I was getting better at story and, and story was the thing I knew I wanted to be close to. So when I switched to becoming to an editor, like just focusing again on that target, things started to move a little bit quicker because I wasn't, um, you know, all the resources were going towards one thing. Um, and I had become known for being the story editor. So when I just imagine when I moved into your world, I was smashing through these 15 second ads, 30 second ads, because I was so used to independent film, which was incredibly difficult and the decision making and the decision trees of what you could choose in a scene. Well, how do I want her to react this way or that way? What is her character feeling in the context of this two hour movie? You know, where is she in the story? All of these things, when you're doing a 60 second ad, a lot of the decisions like that are, I don't want to say they're made for you, but there's a lot less to make. How does she feel about her Dunkin' coffee? Does she love it or does she really love it? That's it, right? It's not like you don't have that many options, you know? So it makes it so much, it was so much easier and I was very, very, very fast. And I think that's what allowed me to excel. But again, in a much longer uh, timeline, I ended up kind of doing what Melissa did, what, which was taste all the different things that were happening. And mind you guys, for context, I came out of NYU at 2010. Okay. F Facebook was what, 2008 or six when it launched? YouTube came out, I think, right around that time in 08. Um, the 5D Mark II, which revolutionized digital cinema, came out when I was in school. Yeah, you guys, is, you following me here, Melissa? Like, things didn't exist. I didn't have... You're old, I get it. There was none of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, right? Think, I mean, honestly, how much content do you make for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok now? A lot. Like, okay, so that, yeah, a lot. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I didn't know that was going to happen, obviously, because it wasn't around. And so I thought I was going to do feature films. Um, and basically, when I hit 30, sort of had this awakening, like, why did I get into this in the beginning? It was to impact people. And guess what? Where are people's eyeballs now? I mean, how many Instagram and TikTok videos and YouTube videos have you seen versus how many movies have you watched in the past year? I think mm -hmm. kids coming out now that are interested in creative fields, you have a tremendous amount of opportunity to decide what you're going to be making that people are going to be watching. And I think I want a lot of these young filmmakers to recognize that there's a ton of opportunity. If the goal is to impact people with your stories, there are so many places you can do that now. Obviously we're doing it this way, right? Via audio and some basic video on YouTube. Like there's so, so many ways and don't limit yourself. And when I was coming out, I was not, it took me a long time to accept that YouTube was um, as powerful as it is. But again, I had gone, I had, when YouTube came out, I thought it was all for cat videos and like fart jokes, you know, which it was for a few years. It was. <laughs> Thanks for watching that clip from the Creative and Account podcast. If this brought you any value, please consider giving us a like, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next one.